Hey everybody, Mike here. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're pouring a house and garage floor. This is part one. I'm going to show you the garage. And what my opinion on this is there's way too much rebar, if that's even possible. It's way overkill. And I want to know your opinion. Like, what do you think on a small residential garage like this? Probably only driving a, a car in here, not even a truck. Is that too much rebar? 12 inches on center, number four, pink bar which is fiberglass rebar and four inch that concrete floor, which is pretty normal for us. The two inches of styrofoam underneath the concrete is code. So that goes under basically almost every single floor we pour here in Maine. And you can see it called for the same thing in the house. So the house pour will be part two. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. If you like to watch videos about concrete, I pour concrete every single day and I videotape everything. And then I teach people I give you tips and tricks and teach you how to pour concrete like we do. So if you like that kind of stuff, if you want to learn about that, you can subscribe, watch my videos on YouTube. If you want to really learn how to do what we do, all the different skills and tasks and techniques, then the Concrete Underground is my private training. You can join the Concrete Underground. Uh, that's a small monthly fee and you can go in there and I have all kinds of trainings about teaching you how to pour concrete, how to finish, how to stamp concrete, how to do epoxy coatings. There's all kinds of trainings in there. So the Concrete Underground link for that is below. But right now, this video, you can see the garage. It's about 14 by 28, I think the garage was. And the, the blueprints, the engineer specced 12 inches on center rebar. I don't think we've done one 12 inches on center all year. This is like August right now. So this is the first one that's been specced. I can see maybe a commercial garage where you're driving in you know, bigger, heavier trucks or something. You know, the, the floor might be specced at six inches thick with a matter rebar 12 inches on center, but not a residential garage like this. Most of the jobs we pour, like houses and garages, we, we do basically these types of floors every day, all, all season long from April to November. And most of them, I'd say 75% of them are just specced with fiber mesh. So not even wire. And we've been doing it that way for years with no problems. As long as the sub base is compacted correctly and they're poured inside a foundation wall like this, like we never have trouble with the concrete floors breaking up, settling, cracking up, nothing like that. So to spec one like this with 12 inches on center, I thought was a little bit crazy. But like we're we're a sub on this job so i don't i don't question it we just do what we're told we were actually we were actually hired to come down and and lay and tie the rebar mat too so we got paid to do that too so it's not like it's a big deal or anything but i guess my question is is it really necessary on a small little residential house like this to have all that rebar <laughs> but let me know what you guys think and in addition to that, you're going to get to see, at least get to see how we, how we pour out concrete like this, uh, why we use the, the floor mix we use, why we have it at this slump right here. Slump is how, how dry or how stiff or wet the concrete is. We tend to pour a kind of a looser concrete because we use water reducer in there. We can have a mid-range water reducer or a high-range water reducer. And that allows us to pour the slump a little bit looser than maybe what most people do. And it kind of looks wet, but it's really not. It has a really low water cement ratio, so it's still really strong. And we just ask for that at the concrete plant. When we order the concrete and they put it in and truck shows up, they mix up and this is what it comes out like. So it makes our job really easy. Now we like pouring out because, because we're very skilled and we do this every day we pour out almost the whole thing as you can see before we screed it now if you're kind of new to this if you're learning you're probably not going to pour it all out like we are you might pour out maybe maybe 10 feet of it maybe half the garage before you screed it but because you're going to see it's only going to take us a minute to get this down with the screed we we tend to like pour almost all of it out we'll leave some of it open at the end you might not be able to see it too good in the video but we'll leave some of it open so if we are a little bit high right here we can pull that high into that open spot and not have to shovel it out over the edge and we came 
we came here the day before and you know we got the rebar in we we also set up a self-leveling laser a rotary laser that's by dewalt and we shoot our grades so we'll take an average of four inches over the top of that styrofoam and we'll raise you know our grade up four inches we'll mark it on the wall a lot of the garages we do like this they're sloped from the back towards the front so we'll start at the back make our pencil mark snap a chalk line and then we'll lower the marks as we go towards the front something like this we might slope it two inches so I'll mark out the back I'll mark out the middle I'll drop it an inch mark out the middle I'll drop it another inch mark out the front and then we snap chalk lines and that's what we that's what we go by when we mag use our mag float and we mag that pad around the outside edge so no, we're not just eyeballing it and because our screed is the right width here we don't need to set the laser up while we're pouring here because we have the grades all set you can see how quick Duke, uh, Darren and Luke are right there screeding and then look how nice this bow flow it's using the right slump knowing how to screed properly the bow float when you run it you push it and pull it back you can see how smooth that is there's no foot tracks there's no dips there's no humps it smooths out really nice about the only thing you can see a little bit is the you can kind of see the impression of the rebar in there and that's just that's normal honestly sometimes if the rebar is in the middle or maybe even a little bit higher you can see those impressions you know you try to get the rebar right about in the middle if you can now those will go away when we power trial so we'll uh, you know we'll let this set up we'll pour the house let it set up for however long it needs to it might be an hour might be an hour and a half pull out the power trials and then all those you know imperfections from the bowl float the the little i guess whatever you want to call them from the rebar the divots from the rebar that all that stuff all goes away it all fills in it flattens out really nice and then you can't tell none of that's in there So we're pumping as you can see dangle pumping which makes the job a lot easier the thing is that dangle pump right there it costs it costs eleven hundred dollars to get him on site and you get him for the way it is in Maine you get him for four hours so if it takes you longer than that they start charging by the hour now they'll have he's got another job lined up already in another town could be an hour away could be two hours away like I don't know but they usually line up multiple jobs two or three sometimes even four in a day so when you when they pour for people like us they really like it because you know we're actually pretty fast we'll get him out of here in probably an hour and a half versus the four hours they kind of give you they don't give you any break on the on the money for that but at least they like pouring for you early in the morning Now the reason we did the garage first instead of doing the house first is because the house is actually a crawl space. When they put in the floor beam and then the floor stringers and then plywood that that deck over, there's only going to be like three and a half feet of height in that basement. And the reason they did that is there's, there's either a lot of ledge in this ground and they didn't want to blast all that ledge out to get a full basement or they didn't want to put the house on a slab they actually wanted a frost wall under the house so we do quite a few of these actually when they're down on the coast we're we're on the ocean today the atlantic ocean in maine and it's really rocky so we'll do quite a few of these like this but anyway again let me know what you guys think about overkill on the rebar if you think it's too much like why couldn't they have gone two feet on center and just kind of made it just as good but i want to hear from you guys down in the comments subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one